Good evening, good Tuesday evening to you from the House of Prayer Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, standing in for Bishop David Cooper. So glad to have you all along. We won't be before you long. We always say that one preacher to another and one congregation in the same. However, um, tonight is Bible study night, and uh, that is my endeavor not to keep you long at all. If I get my glasses, I think I'll work a little better. Even so, with that in mind, let us go in prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for thy word. For thy word indeed is a lamp unto our feet and a light on the pathway of life. Come the more, Lord. Thy word is life and thy word gives life and it is light. We're grateful for your favor shown. We're glad for your grace abounding. In the name of Jesus, these that hear your word be blessed and maybe stand firmer and maybe go on to tell a dying world that Jesus is our answer. There's no peace without the Prince of Peace. And that Prince of Peace is Jesus Christ. And all of you say amen. Amen. What we want to look at is there is a time, there was a time that I would get to visit in the schools across the city here of Memphis, and um, we get to talk to the youngsters. And I looked forward to that until I was instructed that you could not use the name Jesus Christ. So I couldn't figure out how I could encourage somebody, especially our young people, without saying the name of Jesus. Well, so I don't get to do that as often as I like, as much also as I like. However, one of those talks entitled A Thief in the Classroom. You can say that again, it's a thief in the classroom. And it's with that thought that the Lord has implanted in my mind is to speak of that same thief. Now, be it so, who in here or who across radio land, across TV land, across uh, uh, Facebook land, however, uh, this broadcast reaches you, uh, uh, wants a thief in their midst. Um, I don't know too many folks that would say, I'd love to have thieves around me. I know that it might sound good, it might sound uh, noble and such, but I promise you, I don't want a thief around me. If you're a thief and you repent and are saved, that's the one thing. But uh, to say that he's a thief um, is another. The scriptures that we will uh, use that I will use or can I say that you use to validate what I'm saying or to uh, um, understand the thought that I want to leave with you and to encourage your own thinking and especially acknowledging the thief in your life. So uh, the word for tonight is uh, um, do you know who's the thief or what's the thief in your life. You can say that the thief in my life, the thief in your life. The scriptures I want you to keep in mind, and there are quite a few of them, and time won't permit me to go through verbatim, but I believe the answer is in reading and studying the word of God. First thing I want you to look at is John 10.10. 10. From there I draw a text, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the scripture goes on to say, I am come that might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And some uh, literature, some Bibles have that word written in red and then there's some interpretations that they're all the same and you have to wonder, is it Jesus saying it? But even so, I've come that thou might have life and thou may have it more abundantly, more abundantly. And for your references, I would that you put in your reference Matthew 14, 27 to 32. Also, the Old Testament I want you to keep in heart, Genesis 50, 19 through 20, Romans 8, 28, 29, Luke 13, 1 to 4, even the story of Habakkuk in the Old Testament, and we'll conclude with Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. Now, the thief cometh not to steal, but to 
kill and to destroy. And I've come that thou might have life and that life more abundantly. In our, the text here, the Bible, the Holy Writ, maybe the King James Version in particular, that word thief shows up 28 times, 28 times in occurrences. And in those 28 times, you can find that some good comes out of the thief as well as the thief come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I notice um, how the thief is used by Jesus Christ, and he doesn't use the analogy of the murderer. He uses the analogy of the thief. So that gives me a quick thought to say, sometimes that thief in your life might be the very thing that pushes you forward. Now, understand what I'm saying is a thief. Thief takes something that belongs to you. That's what a thief does. He takes that which you've worked for, that which you've cherished in your own heart and in your home. Uh, some of us could say, I have a very quick uh, weakness. Don't fool with what's mine, but you do pretty much just about anything to me and I'll scringe and take it. But don't fool with what's mine. Now, what's mine, particularly my wife or my son or any one of them would protect uh, because I'm the husband man of that house, and the Bible gives us if the husband man is not paying attention, if he's not alert, then the thief will come in and take advantage and cause you to be disrupted. But if you align these scriptures up, you will find that our text points to a thief. Thief, beware. You have to look at your life and consider there are birds in your life. The Lord would have you to soar like eagles. But some of you all are walking with buzzards. Eagles encourage and lest you fly high on the will of God, in the will of God, soaring. And when the storm comes, you fly a little higher. That's what an eagle does. But a buzzard stands around and all they do is look. All he does is look. And he's going to pick the bones until it's clean. And if the bones were soft enough, they would number at the bones. You got to watch the truth around you or the thief that's around you. It could be a buzzard, a buzzard instead of an eagle. And saying that, look at Matthew in chapter 14, kind of highlights those things. Be of good cheer. He looks at it and says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou be bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. Now, what that text is pointing to is the fact that uh, um, he sees Jesus coming. And he's scared at first. And then Jesus speaks his eye and he bids him to come. But he gets out on the water. He steps out of the boat. Don't be mad at Peter for doing so. And you're talking about he started shrinking. Don't, don't, don't get mad at him because there are some folks that have not got out of the boat yet. Their old boat of life. They may have not realized that that particular place where they are is a, a thief in hiding. It's, it's a sheep in wolf clothing. It's a thief. Don't want you to go no further. Don't want you to go no deeper in the Lord. Don't want you to say that the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. There's some of you that are listening and reading and hearing this broadcast and wonder why well, I'm going through. But there are things that thievery in this matter will bless you. But in such he said come. Come. Now the thing that happened was he looked at the winds and the waves and he took his eyes off Jesus. I sincerely believe that in the final analysis of the will of Jesus Christ and in God and God is that we be just like Jesus Christ and then our home will be in eternal heaven with God, spending life with God. Now, life issues become intrusive and destructive and invalidating God's word in Genesis, Joseph dealt with some issues, dealt with a mighty lot of issues. But was it not the will of God that he would bring Joseph and these children of Israel to a place in the land to where he could take care of them? The story leads us to believe just that. 
Jesus stretched forth his hands and brought, come on up, I got you. Why for did you doubt? Genesis, man, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry. I, but God meant it for good. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And you've got to turn around and look. Now, you can't get good validation just from everywhere. You need validation as believers that you can stand and soar like an eagle. Not mope around like a buzzard. For you know it, the whole, all your meat to be off your bones, won't nothing be left. And you wonder, what has happened to my faith? Now, the suffering Joseph went through, you're saying, man, you just want me to go through suffering. And then a lot of folks take that word suffering along. They take it and they draw the word right out. But they fail to get the benefit of what suffering does. And that discussion may have been lost and you didn't attend service that day or Bible study that day or you hadn't read the scriptures yourself. And you're wondering why I got to suffer. Why I got to suffer? Why do I have to deal with it? Joseph could have took it, taken that issue. He might have had that thought. We never really know what's in the mind of Joseph, but what that is written God meant it for good, though they meant it for evil. Whether it be Trump, whether it be Biden, whether it be Billy Bob or whether it be Jones, whether it be uh, uh, that job and not making the income that you think you ought to make, with, uh, be affliction and sickness. It could be either one of those things. And you have to wonder, when you look at sickness, well, there's another one that just jumped up. Sickness is quite what they call, they use the word of trite. Yeah, could be very trite. Uh, um, where it becomes a word that uh, you've heard it before. All things work together for good. You've heard it before. God's going to work it out. He's going to bless you. Lift your head up. He's going to bless you. God is blessing me right now. See, I do, I do, I do, and God is blessing me. I'm glad to hear God is blessing. There's nothing wrong in that. But you need to understand something. The Bible still tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Where you fit on that scale, I can't tell you. You read the scriptures and find out that if many of the afflictions of the righteous is that thief that comes to take or that thief that comes to be a blessing and open the doors of the will of God that you still make it to heaven. I'm sure you will get an answer. The, the, uh, but the one that tends to come out, and this one hit me dead on the head uh, 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 in one of my articles that they made the comment, why aren't you standing there uh, uh, promoting black this and promoting black that and promoting black that and this and that and the other? And again, I'm concerned about the ethnicity of a people. I'm concerned, but I'm concerned about doing what's right with everybody. The will of God in Jesus Christ is always to do right to everybody. Now, in nation against nation, don't get those two words or three words mixed up. Because in the last days in the book of Matthew, you will find that he says, don't be deceived. There's a grand deception in the land whether you get behind those that push for ethnicity. What will happen is you'll wind up putting Jesus on a social religion instead of a redeeming religion. Instead of a relationship, you need to have Jesus on the inside. If you get caught up on the carnality of life, it will disrupt you. That's a thief. That's a thief. That's a thief. And you have to be careful. In God's standing, I picked it up in Luke chapter 3. It says there were present. Some said that told the Galileans of, blood, of the blood whose blood Pilate mingled with the sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all of those? Huh? So suppose these, they were worse than them. Suppose ye that the Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, you shall likewise perish. And then he goes on to point to, or those 18, whom the towers of Shalom fell on and slew them. Thank ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. God, 
He's not giving favor to any one ethnicity. Don't be deceived. But that you repent, that your relationship, you ought to pursue Jesus Christ as more and twice as much as you did last year in the tail end of 20 and the 21 going forward. Too much is happening for us not to see Jesus Christ, the redeeming power of the Lord. You look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, oh, oh, oh. Habakkuk looks down and says, the Chaldeans, they were worse than your people, even though Habakkuk was talking about the ills of their people, the children of Israel. They were doing wrong every year to wait. They were upside down when they should have been right side up. They were supposed to be the example. They were the example of sinfulness. But God says, I've raised up this bunch of folk right here. They no good. They do twice the wrong. But they are the instrument of God's wrath. I told one preacher in speaking to another, and many times in life I said, don't become the instrument of God's wrath. Because I found out that in that same year, that same presence, after this was done, that same instrument God dealt with. And he dealt with it pretty severe. Beware. Know your thief. You need to know the thief. You need to know who it is. You need to hope. Well, if you go over in the Old Testament, there's another one in the Old Testament. What about Jeremiah? Jeremiah didn't want to go to those folk over there in Nineveh. He didn't want to do it. This here will enhance your thought about what is actually a thief. You cannot let racism be your instrument to serve Jesus Christ. It's a relationship from the heart out. I've seen folks shout and praise the Lord, and I've watched them go out and cuss people out. I've put clothes on a lot of preachers, a lot of preachers in my day. And I know some that were coming back, because they probably won't do it now if they see this on there, but they come and bought clothes and will cuss me out in the same token and have done it. That's pretty sad. Should it be named? No, what you, what you have told me was I recognize that thief, and a thief is a thief. If I'm disrupted by it, or if I'm offended by it, or if I see the disdain, I might turn around and make myself a little better than they are. In my closing, I want you to understand something. I don't want to prolong the time, uh, this few minutes that we're having, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. That's your focus. That's your goal. That's the way we are headed. That's the way we as believers, that's our format. That's the foundation that Paul spoke of. The foundation standeth sure. Build on this foundation. And if you stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified, anything, 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 anything that comes up against you, whether it be affliction in the body, whether it be finances, whether it be this and that and pandemics all across the land and your own financial stand, your own affliction, your own family, Jesus Christ is my way. He's the truth and he's the life. And this is what we ought to focus on. Get in the word of God. Apply it to your life. He is the word of life. He is the light of the world. He is our life. Trust him. He'll make it happen for you. What is it that the it falls into? That which is ordained of God. You can find yourself between Genesis to Revelation. And in the end, Jesus Christ allowed these things to show himself. He want his glory. Are you holding his glory? Are you keeping his glory? Are you denying what really actually belongs to him? If you have life in your body. It is only the living that can complain. Father, in the name of Jesus, come the more in your people's, in your mind, in the minds of our spirit, oh God. Come the more in our lives. Bind the works of the flesh. Help us to identify this thief in our life that comes to hinder that which rightly belongs to us. But in most important of all, God, 
bring us into the right relationship with you that we may grow thereby that the world would know that true Christianity, true love of Christ, not as those that wear the name Christian all the time, but them that actually serve and believe Christ. Then the issues of ethnicity has no bound. The issue of feeding the sick, of feeding the hungry, there is no bound. Do it for your glory, and we'll ever give you the praise and the glory rightfully that belongs to you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen.